So section 3.6 are going to take our radical equations and we're going to learn how to solve these. So in general, what I need to do is I need to get the x by itself. Okay? So do that if, if you have a single radical... You want to isolate it by itself on one side. So you get it by itself on one side of an equation. Think of a, something that's a radical, something raised to a power, or something that's underneath a root symbol. It's got parentheses around it. You want to get that root all by itself on one side of the equation. Then what you want to do is you want to raise both sides to the reciprocal root. For example, if I have x minus 3 to the 2 thirds power, that's a radical equation. What power do I raise both sides to? No. What's the reciprocal of two thirds? Both sides. You're going to get this to one side of the equation. Put everything else on the other side. You're going to see some examples. Just on. Sorry. So I'm going to multiply this by three halves. What's two thirds times three halves? It's one. That's why you are raising both sides to that reciprocal power. You want to get that exponent to a 1. Because anything to the first power is itself. itself. Okay? Everything to the first power is itself. Then what we're going to do is pray. Now, we're going to solve using chapter 1 or two techniques. So there should be an easy question that I should be getting from one of you guys right now. If I ask, so when I ask if there's any questions, I should see all five of your hands come up because there's an obvious question based on the instructions I wrote down. Okay. What's the obvious question, Cross? Chapter one and chapter two techniques. Um, no, that's not the obvious question. What's the obvious question? That's my question. <laughs> Jordan, what's the obvious question? What's the obvious question? I, I, if, what if there's two? What if there's two radicals? Okay. If there are two radicals, you want one on each side. If there are two radicals, you're going to want one on each side, and you may end up having to do this process more than once. I'm going to do examples that have all of these situations in there. So, Cross, the answer to your question, chapter one is solving quadratics. Chapter two is solving polynomials. In both cases, you move everything to one side of the equation, and you put zero to the other side, oh. and you factor it. You guess your factors. You do synthetic division or whatever to find your answers. Except with two, you have to have one. Okay. So I would like everybody to please turn to page 208. 208? Wow, we were getting up there, Miss Jen. Not really. It's like... So problem number five. Cross, let me have this. No, that's, that's one of your homework problems. Let's skip five. Let's do... Uh, I don't care if you get 32. Five. No. We can, we can do five. Two. two. Do number four. I'm going to do three first. Like split. Square root of 5x plus 1 equals 6. Step one is to get the radical by itself on one side of the equation. I'm already there. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Step two is to raise both sides to the power that's the reciprocal of this one. What, what is that? What's that power right here? What power is that? How could I rewrite that? It's one half. 
So one half. You did, guys did an entire homework assignment that all you did is turn square roots into one half powers. I thought you were just meaning. No, I wanted to know what power that was. No, like the power okay. that it goes on, not the reciprocal. I okay, so now I want to raise both sides to the reciprocal of one half, which is two. 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 That's going to get rid of my radical. That's going to be 36. And that's going to be 36. Next step. Subtract one. 5x is 35. Next step. Divide by 5. Which x is, is seven. 7. However, if you have an even root, you must go back and check to make sure you're not going to be taking the square root of a negative number. There are going to be times you're going to end up with more than one solution. You need to cross off the solutions that don't make sense. Put the 7 in here. 35 plus 1 is 36. Is that positive? Yes. Is it more than greater than or equal to 0? Then we're good. And 6 equals 6. Okay. So we are good. Okay. Any questions on that one? Let's do problem number 11. Square root of negative 2x plus 3. And there was something after the square root? Negative 6. Equals? Plus 10. I mean 10. Okay. Step one is to get the radical by itself on one side of the equation. You don't want this 2 hanging out here. Because if you ended up squaring this side, you'd end up with a trinomial. So you want to? Yeah, I want to move that 2 over there first. Yeah, make it 8. Okay, so I have the square root of negative 2x plus 3 equals 12. Oh. Oh. Stop. That is a square root. So I need to raise both sides to the second power to get rid of the square root. On the left, I have negative 2x plus 3. On the right, I have 144. Next step. Um, divide by negative. Oh. Subtract oh. 3. I was Subtract already, 3. I was already ahead of you on that. Last step. Divide by 2. 5. Negative 2. There we go. X <laughs> equals negative 141. Pass. Your book would give you um, negative 70 and a half. My answer that I'm expecting is negative 141 halves. Any questions on that? Nice and simple with square roots. What do you think the next one I'm going to do is? Number. How about some cube roots? I get 13. So we're going to do some cube roots. 13. Um, 13 or 14. No, those are too easy. 15. Let's do 17. Actually, no, 21 looks awesome. Ha. That's not even a homework problem. What the heck? 21. That ain't normal. Oh, you don't want to Negative 4 times the cube root of x plus 10 plus 3 equals 15. Step one is to get the radical by itself on one side of the equation. So I'm going to basically cover this middle part up and get it by itself. First step is to subtract 3. And that leaves me with a 12. Next thing I'm going to do is divide by the negative 4. So I should have the cube root of x plus 10 is equal to negative, okay. negative 3. Now I want to raise both sides to the same power to get rid of a cube root. What power do I raise three. to get rid of cube roots? Three. Just a 3. Make sure that when you're showing the work this time, you put parentheses around that negative sign there. What is negative 3 cubed? Negative 27. Negative 27. And this is x plus 10. Last step, subtract 10 from both sides, and I get x is equal to negative 37. I do not have to check this answer because the domain for a cube root function is all real numbers, so it doesn't, it'll always work. Any questions on basic cube roots? No, those are very simple. Let's do problem 31. Huh. 31 is fun. Like Can we please be done? 3x plus 43 to the 2 thirds plus 
plus 22 equals 38. Okay. Step one. Somebody walk me through it. Subtract 22. Subtract 22. So I have 3x plus 43 to the 2 thirds equals 16. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Next step. Raise both sides to the same power. What power am I going to raise both sides to? Three halves. That becomes a one, which gives this three x plus 43. What's the square root of 16? Uh, four. And four cubed is? Uh, 64. Questions on that step? So this is all just like the beginning of the step. Any questions on that step? None? Okay. Um, next step is to do what? Subtract 43 would give us 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Okay. Subtract 43. Divide by that. Is that my only answer? I'm assuming since you said that, then no. Let's think about it. If it was a square root and I got a single answer, that would make sense, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's think about cube root types of things. Oh, they can be positive or negative. My cube roots can be positive or negative. Am I taking the cube root of something? Yeah. Pretty much. the cube root of something? Oh, I don't know because it's 3 over 2, not 3. It's the power, so no, think it's about the power this. and the thingamajig. The radical? Yeah, no. It's the um, exponent and the power. It was the, a couple lessons ago. The base? That's my power, that's my base. I love that. That's the best. Okay. So what you need to think about there is the possibility of having a second solution, okay? As of right now, I do not need you to give me a second solution. Oh. But what I want you to do tonight is I want you, when you do these problems, when you get all done, graph this function or graph this function, okay? If you graph it, if you graph this function, you'll figure out where where the zeros are, and those zeros are where they touch. This one does have two solutions. I am not going to make you come up with the second solution. The second solution is negative. As far as I'm concerned, the primary root solution would be good here. And now for Jordan's, the obvious question that needed to be asked question. Chapter one and two. We are going to do problem, let's look like a fun one, 52. What is chapter one and two? <laughs> 52, I have to do the process twice. <laughs> 52, I have to do the process twice. So 52 is your Friday's homework. Part of your Friday's homework. Well, that type of problem is Friday's homework, I think. Yep. So 52, I have the square root of 5x plus 6 plus 3 is equal to the square root of 3x plus 3 plus 4. Okay. Monday. Tonight's Thursdays and Fridays, or I'll do Monday. I want to have one radical on each side. But I only want one side to have the extra number. So pick a side and move the, the other number to the other side. Because I'm going to end up squaring both sides here, and I don't want to have to play with binomials on both sides. Do you guys understand that? Otherwise, I'll have to do this process three times instead of twice. I'm going to move it to the side that's going to keep it positive. So I'm going to move the three over here and make that a one. Then 
I'm going to square both sides. This squared is just 5x plus 6. That's a binomial squared. A binomial squared turns into what? And please copy cross. Uh, trinomial. A trinomial. The first term is the first term squared, which would just be what's underneath the radical here. The last term is the last term squared. I'm just going to put it right here. The middle term is 2 times this, which is 2, times this, which would make it 2 root 3x plus 3. Now do you guys see why I'm going to have to do the process twice? Because now I'm going to have to solve it like one of the previous problems. Move everything to one side, the radical on the other. If you would have squared both sides from right here, you would have had to do the process three times. That's why you move the extra stuff over first, so you get at least one of these just by itself. Okay, now I'm going to move everything over here. So 5x minus 3x is 2x. 2x. 6 minus 3? 3. No, 6 minus 3? Three, 3. Minus 1? 2. Minus, so that would be 2. And this is left with a 2 square root of 3x plus 3. Any questions on that step? I just moved everything over except for the root so far. Before I square both sides, I am going to divide both sides by 2. Now I am going to square both sides. On this side, I get 3x plus 3. On this side, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay. Now I have a quadratic, which means move everything to one side and put a 0 on the other. So I'm going to have x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. I'm now going to solve that like chapter 1. I'm going to factor it. Two numbers that multiply to negative 2 that add to negative 1. Anybody? Bueller? Wait, negative 2 add to 1? Yeah, add to negative, negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 1. Add to negative 2, and multiply to negative 2, add to negative 1. Oh, negative 2 and 1. Negative 2, positive 1. So x is equal to 2, and x is equal to negative 1. Make sure you're not going to get a negative number in here, which you want on those. Where'd you get the two, uh, the, the, that thing? I set that equal to zero and got a two, no. set that equal to zero and got a negative one. On the other side, with, in the black. The two of the, no. I squared that. That. On the other, other side. This? Yes. Two times the product, middle term, of a binomial squared. Oh. So you now have enough information to do all the way through 5.3.6.